Greetings everybody, it's M0YKS and tonight it's NOAA Weather Satellite Decoding and to do this I'm using some free software which you can see on the left hand side of the screen this software is called WX2IMG that's Whiskey X-Ray, Tango Oscar, Italy, Mike, Golf and this is the freeware version upgrading it can make you do a few more things and get a better picture but right now I'm just trialling out the free one I normally use Bonito Radcom 5.2 which is really good uh, but that's a little bit expensive so I've decided to just put this one on for all you guys that might fancy your shot at uh, downloading a weather image via your radio onto your PC screen so to do this all you need is a receiver which will receive on 137 megahertz and this particular satellite is going to be coming on 137620 and the satellite I'm going to be trying to receive is uh, NOAA 15 there's a quite a few active satellites so you can get different passes quite regular and the uh, purpose of these satellites is to monitor the weather monitor the sea levels the temperatures and also act as um, emergency communication uh, transponders for people at sea so there's lots of uh, of NOAA satellites orbiting the earth and uh, this one's just leaving um, the west coast of Africa about to go across onto the mainland and then once it passes over that it will be getting into range they do have a very big footprint uh, you can see it on the right hand side of the screen and uh, the reception circle is, is very large the image that you're going to get popping up on your screen is also a very big image now usually these images are transmitted and they come in black and white resolution uh, on this particular frequency and then the software will um, basically decode it and then it will enhance the picture and get, you'll get an optimum um, image uh, this works quite well and uh, to do this I'm just using my FT847 so there's the radio it's locked in at the moment I'm just going to plug my um, microphone lead or should I say my audio cable into the phone socket and that will be connected to the computer uh, input either the line in or the mic in so as you can see I've now plugged that cable straight into there and that will be going straight into my computer sound card uh, it's a PC tower in my case, but it will work on, on any kind of computer with a, a line in or a microphone in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of squelch on. I've got the audio volume set uh, to a reasonable level. And once the satellite pass starts to, to occur, you will see information appearing in these windows. You'll also get to see the amount of level of volume that's going into the sound card. And it will go a different colour. If it's uh, coloured green, you're at the correct setting. If you're coloured red, you've got too much volume. And if you're, uh, I think it's amber, it's not enough. So that will be obvious once that starts. So right now, it's just a case of waiting for the satellite to come into range, uh, which won't be too far away. I'll let you have a quicker look at the actual position of the sat. I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. We'll drag it across. And as you can see, it's right there. So we're going to wait for it to start kicking in. Uh, and all I had to do to do this, I have to put this uh, particular program into the decode or the record position. So if I put it into the record position like that, that will pick the satellite for me. So it's asking me, if, do I want it to record only or do I want it to record an auto process? So I'm after an image, so I'm going to get it to create an image. So I've ticked that box and I could set, adjust the settings for a, a much clearer one. But I'm just going to uh, show you how it works. So we could have a manual test or we could do the auto record. Well, I know it works, so I'm just going to click on auto record. And once you keep an eye on these levels here, you can now disable the squelch and you, you might see something appearing on there. Well, once it starts to receive, all these levels will start working. As you can see, the program's running. It's telling us already the status. It's waiting for NOAA 15, which is northbound 33 degrees west on 137620 megahertz it's telling us it will be in range at um, 1929 local time right now it's 1926 so we've got three minutes to wait so i'll come back once the pass begins what will happen the uh, actual software will just st immediately start to record the image and decode it as a raw image it'll look a little bit um, difficult to see what the picture is it is evening so we're not going to get a clear image because uh, these things are better carried out in the daylight. But just for testing purposes and to see how it all works, you'll get to see what an image comes in like. The image that I'm receiving will be black and white. Uh, on the 137 megahertz band, 
the pretty low resolution pictures uh, if you get a receiver with um, the higher uh, frequencies there are satellites which transmit high resolution pictures on there they're also NOAA satellites but for now we're just working on the 137 megahertz band so the picture we're going to receive is going to be in black and white once we get this picture it'll be a raw image as I just said and then it will get enhanced naturally by the software uh, and then finally a little bit of colour will be added and uh, some contrast and we should end up with an half decent image obviously that's not going to happen so successful tonight due to the fact that it is dark so all I have to do is sit back listen to the frequency keep an eye on the signal and basically enjoy the pass so it's a great way to check the weather in real time and the images are constant it's in permanent transmission mode is NOAA or all the NOAA satellites are and they're just uh, reproducing an image of what the camera is looking at whilst it's facing on the earth the footprint and the image is, is very large and you can see a, a very good uh, image of the earth as it's passing by so that's it and I hope you enjoy how it works I'll just sit back and let you enjoy the video thanks for subscribing following and liking so this is just about in range now as you can see uh, my local my area where I'm going to be receiving from is just here in the center of the UK northern England and the good thing about these satellites is, is it's a very good strong signal plenty of power a uh, large satellite with uh, good batteries and solar panels and a decent antenna system so you're going to get a big signal uh, and it's very similar to SSTV in the way that the signal sounds and works so as I mentioned uh, the volume uh, and that's appearing in this uh, bottom corner here so we're actually starting to record now because the satellite is in range we're not getting the signal so well at the minute so hopefully the signal will come in we're in the 2% of the pass, uh, we've got 50% volume, uh, we've got 48% on the scale there. It's telling me that the satellite elevation is 3.7 degrees, it's giving me the azimuth position, and I've got everything else recording, so that's, that's the software working. All we need now is to start hearing the satellite. So we can slowly see the picture climbing up the screen, it's, it's fuzzy at the minute, but we can just about receive the signal as it's just leaving Africa so we've got a good distance we've got a range of 2,322 miles so it's just going to get stronger and stronger as it comes up uh, the picture's not clear obviously the signal's not strong enough and more, more importantly it's dark the Doppler shift is something to consider you have to adjust the frequency a couple of megahertz up it starts 623 and then you bring it down and right now we're on 622 and a half or 622500 the central frequency the most optimum reception will be when it reaches 620 that's 137620 so this particular pass so far, it's not going to produce a great picture. However, it's definitely working. And the signal's coming up. So yeah, the signal's starting to come through clearer now. And uh, we've got a, a range of 1560 miles. So it's starting to make the noises that I'm used to hearing. You can see a bit of a border appearing on the screen. You generally get this border and two images. So you may have the uh, image of the actual visual in one side and possibly thermal image in the left hand side. That kind of affair. I'm not 100% sure exactly what the images are. I just know that's how it works. So as the uh, satellite is approaching, obviously the signal's getting stronger. The stronger the signal, the clearer the image. This particular pass is not the greatest signal. I'm, I'm used to getting a much stronger signal than this. However, it could get better as it gets nearer. But, as you can see, the uh, image is being received, nevertheless. But I will try um, an next NOAA satellite, which is coming up in 40 minutes time. That one's NOAA 18, and that one's going to have a 66 degrees pass. So we'll see how that one compares. I know that one will be probably better. 
It's a slightly newer one. Not that any of them are new, they've all been around for a long time. Yeah, so we're getting a much better reception now as the satellite's getting closer. It's, it's still 1330 miles away, so we're not doing too bad. And uh, the elevation at the minute is 33 degrees. So it's actually peaked at its maximum elevation on this pass. But uh, quite often the signal gets better anyway as it passes further north. And uh, I generally get the reception uh, at least up until Iceland. So it should be okay for quite a while. We've got 52% on the bottom, which is just here. And this is telling us how far through the pass we've actually got. So we're halfway through, or just over halfway. And as you can see, the volume's up at 53. It's looking good, it's nice and green. As I explained earlier, the image is gonna be pretty poor due to the fact that it's dark. We've also gone past the central reception point. So we're dropping past the central point 620, and we're now just going down below the, uh, the Doppler threshold of this particular frequency. And there's the position of the satellite. So that's the uh, footprint I was telling you about. It's a very big footprint and uh, the actual image will also be big when you get a good clear one. So there's a close up of the settings. You can see them, how that works. And the information is in the bottom of the tab. These passes generally last up to 15 minutes. So you've got a, a, large, a large area covered at that point. Quite often images can extend here in the UK from the northern African coast right up to Iceland. So you're getting a very big image. And the main reason for a large image is the height of the satellite. So the higher the satellite in orbit, the larger the footprint, the better reception. Obviously the ones that we use for amateur radio, they're low earth orbiting satellites. So they're a lot lower down and their footprint is a lot smaller. So as I mentioned, uh, the NOAA satellite now is, is actually between Iceland and Greenland and the distance at the moment is 2,165, 170 it's climbing away, it's leaving and we're still getting a reasonable signal but the tone of the signal's changing due to the Doppler even though the radio is automatically adjusting there's still a slight little bit of noticeable shift in there and this is why the image generally bends but you can use something called slant correction in the software. But like I said, this image is pretty poor because it's dark and not the best signal. The next one will still be dark, but it should be a better signal. So we've got a good range on it, coming up to nearly 2,700 miles. And we're still getting a signal, so it's quite impressive. Just about to lose it now, so you can even see the edge of the footprint as it vanishes. So we're up at 99% of the pass. I've actually knocked the, the volume off. So what's going to happen now, it's, it's automatically sorting out the uh, map. It's adding uh, different uh, elements to it and uh, cleaning up the image. And we won't really see any land because it's dark, but we may see a little bit of uh, cloud formation or uh, something uh, indicating different temperatures. So we'll just see how it pans out, but uh, it takes a few seconds. And as you can see in the, the right hand corner, uh, there's a blue bar and that's actually creating the image for me so on 96 percent 99 percent we're almost there once this is achieved we'll be i'll have a look and see what the saved image looks like and as I explained earlier this is not going to be great so uh those people watching thinking that i've done a rubbish job i, I have done but it is dark so i'm just demonstrating that you can basically see how it all works so i've got a couple of notifications i'll just get rid of them and uh and that this is the software working by itself correcting all the images there and, and overlaying various stuff. So you can see the outline of the UK and it is a particular clear night tonight. There's no clouds whatsoever in the sky. I saw the space station go by a few moments ago. So that is the completed job just about. It's just sharpening and a little bit of correction of, of gamma and uh, adding a few other stuff. So that's, that'll be the uh, infrared images to do with heat and and stuff like that and sea levels and all that kind of stuff. I won't profess to know it all, but basically there's all sorts of information uh, gathered from these NOAA satellites. So this is just something going off in the night at dark, but if you try this on a daylight pass, 
you get a spectacularly clear image. So I'm just going to show you the end result and that'll be the end of this video for now. So now that the image has been created, I can check out the saved image in there. And uh, this is what you saw being made. So that's the image that I'm getting. Like I said, it's not the best because it's night time. But you can see we've got very little cloud uh, in our area. And obviously with it being dark, we're not really getting the true reflection of everything. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll just uh, blast through a couple of the raw images to show you what we've got. So these are sort of things that you come, you can receive when it opens up. That's our image I've received previously. Uh, we'll have some more. Um, some are better than others, obviously. Let's have a look. See what we've got. You can record audio files. So that's record tonight's pass. We could play it back if we wanted. And then there's quite a few different images that, you can, that I've received whilst messing around with this software. So that is a, a black and white image. That's the sort of thing you can expect to receive in daylight. Uh, so this is the, my area around this part here. Uh, obviously I've got two images. Like I explained, there's a border with two separate images in there. So that's a, a previous received image from uh, Noah 18, I believe. Hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to try it out, just download WX to IMG, plug it into your radio and your sound card, sit back and just receive. You can receive these on vertical antennas with no problem. Uh, the egg beater antennas are uh, very good for this kind of thing as well. This is M0YKS in IO93 signing off and wishing you a good evening.